Welcome to James River's Head Ed Club. This morning we'll be hearing from Nikita Jason. I stood facing my dad and my coach who were on the other side of the fence while I was on the court. I told them, I just can't do it anymore. I'm making too many mistakes and I've changed up my strategy and nothing's working. And I'm already losing, so you can just go. I don't want you to watch me lose. They both kind of stared at me for a couple of seconds, unsure of what to say. Finally, my coach said, well, do you just want to shake hands and let it be over now? I looked at him and kind of rolled my eyes and tried to argue with him that throughout the match, my strategies just weren't working. And before coaching time was up, my dad, after not saying anything for a couple of minutes, finally said, you're making too many mistakes. You're letting your mistakes hold you back. So stop thinking about the score. Get back out there. Imagine the score back at 0-0. And now get out there and win. I thought he was crazy because I had already lost the first set and I was down the second set 0-4. All my opponent needed was two more games to take the match. I thought I was pretty much done. I know this sounds cliche, but tennis is so much more to me than just a game. It's taught me some of the most important life lessons. One of the most important lessons it's taught me is how to overcome your mistakes and how to deal with them. So for those of you who haven't played tennis, let me tell you, this sport is all about you. You're on the court all by yourself, the same way you're living your life. You're the one living your life and nobody is living it for you. You're the one to blame if you lose, the same way you deserve the credit if you win. You're the one playing for yourself and you're the one representing yourself out on the court. You're the only, you don't have a teammate to blame it on because it's all on you. Yes, you're going to have an audience, you're going to have your opponents, you're going to have your coaches. The same way you're going to have your friends, your family, your acquaintances, and even your enemies. But at the end of the day, you're the one living your life and you have to take responsibility for it. In tennis, the way you play is out of sets. In order to win, you have to win two out of the three sets. Now before I confuse you all and you all think I'm crazy, I'm not going to go on a tangent about winning and losing because that's not what I'm trying to get at here. What I'm talking about is the process. Within your process, within your life, you're the one who's going to experience the ups and downs. And nobody else is going to experience that as vividly as you are. What I've learned very quickly, actually, is that life consists of ups and downs. There are going to be times when you have really big accomplishments, and there are going to be times when you're feeling like you're on cloud nine. But there are also going to be times when you're going to feel like a failure, and when you're going to be at a low. There are going to be times when you feel like you failed so badly that you feel like you just can't come back up because of how badly you failed. But I'm here to tell you that you can make, no matter what, you can make a comeback. You can pick yourself up from the very bottom and climb your way all the way back to the top. My coach once asked me, what percentage of the points does the winner of a tennis match actually win? Let me repeat the question. What percentage of the points does the winner of a tennis match actually win? He told me to take a couple of guesses. So I guessed 75%, 80, 90, 95, and finally, after guessing these really high percentages, my coach said, the winner only wins about 53% of the points, which means they lose about 47% of the points because there's no such thing as a golden match, which is when the winner wins 100% of the points. It's the same way in life. You're not going to win and succeed every single time. There are going to be lows too. Because the people who are successful aren't the ones who never make a mistake, never hit a low point in their life. They're the ones who are able to get knocked down, pick themselves back up, brush themselves off, and keep on going. That very match, I had pretty much beaten myself, myself up the first set. And the second set, I was down 0-4. And like I said, all my opponent needed was to get two more games to win that match. And I know a tennis match really doesn't seem as important as many other life circumstances, but it served as a very, very important example to me. I used to have a really poor mentality about the ups and downs in life. I never used to think about my accomplishments because I would always be so worried that it would just turn into a failure. And whenever I would be failing or whenever I was at a low, I just never thought I'd be able to get back up. There was a time when I lost all my self-worth 
because I would just keep beating myself up for my own failures. And I started completely doubting myself in everything I did because I thought that since I wasn't absolutely perfect, I just couldn't do it. So this led to me losing to easy opponents because I would have a panic attack before the match. And sometimes at school, before I would take a test, I would just become so paranoid about missing a single question that when I would see the first question on the test, my mind would blank and I, was, and I would forget all of the material that I had studied. I, was never, I thought I was never going to be able to accomplish any of my goals because I was just always doubting myself and always focusing on the negative. And it was just taking me to a downward spiral just because I was thinking about all my past hardships and everything that was going wrong. And I would just keep on worrying about the outcome. However, as time went by and I just kept hitting lows, I was realizing this just wasn't right. Why is it that I kept letting my lows get to me? Why is it that I'm letting my own failures hold me back? Life isn't perfect. Life isn't going to be perfect. I'm going to make mistakes. And my game just isn't going to be perfect. And that is okay. That match, I just kept messing up. And I kept thinking to myself, all this training for what? For me to lose to this girl? Like, what am I doing? Why is it that everything I do, I just feel like a total failure? After double faulting almost an entire game, slamming the ball into the net, hitting the ball obviously out, I finally remembered one strategy that my coach had told me that I just completely forgotten about because I was so busy focused on the score. This strategy is called the four R's. Respond, relax, refocus, and ready. Let's start with respond. So you just failed. You hit a low point in your life. You got a 50 on your test. You didn't get a dream job you, that you were working really hard for. You didn't get into the college you wanted to. You didn't get your goal SAT score. You just hit the ball into the net. Whatever the case is, something happened and something didn't go right. And so you have to think about it. What happened? You have to respond to it. What just happened? You have to realize what you did wrong. If you got a 50 on a test, go back to your test and see what mistakes did you make. If you didn't get your dream job, then why would you ask why and see what you did wrong? So that next time, you can maybe get the job. So when I would mess up on a point, my way of responding is either doing a practice swing to see what, my, what I was supposed to do and remind myself how I was supposed to actually do it. After I'm fully aware of my mistake and how to correct it, I cut the tie to it. This is one of the most important parts because if you're still attached to your mistake, then you're still thinking about the past and you're being a past thinker because whatever happens in the past is in the past and there's nothing you can do to change it. After you know what to do and after you know what you've done, the second R is relax. This one's quite easy. You just take a couple of few deep breaths. Maybe you can just be sitting around doing nothing. You could be listening to some music. It's doing anything to keep you from thinking about your mistake. During my match, whenever I'm relaxing, I walk around the court for a couple of seconds before the next point and pick up my racket strings to make them into the perfect little square formations. And when you're ready, you move on to the next R, refocus. When you refocus, you kind of have a mental idea of what you need to do, and you have a plan of action. Is it studying every night for that test because you know that that's the only way you're going to pass the class? Is it seeking help about your depression that you've just been too ashamed to talk about? Is it changing your strategy by hitting the ball cross court down the line or playing the points out longer so you know you can tire out your opponent? Whatever it is you have to do, engrave it in your mind and don't let go of it. And finally, ready. When you're ready, you just know what to do and this time, not thinking about the past, not thinking about the outcome, but just think about what you have, think about the present, the process to get back up. During my match, I used that strategy after every single point, good or bad. I would follow those four R's so I would forget about the past point and I would help me clear my mind so I was thinking about the present rather than the past. Surprisingly enough, I was able to regain my focus. I, was, I got back into the zone and my carelessness was fading. I was in the zone again and I was so focused on making a comeback that during that second set, even though I was down 0-4, I completely forgot that I was down 0-4. I managed to break, work my way up to 4-all and I took the second set. I fought my way back again into the third set and ended up taking the match. 
Even though I would hear my opponent's parents screaming at my opponent to kill me, to finish me off, to get me done with this brat, I had to tell myself that I had to make a comeback and I wasn't going to let anyone tell me that I, could, I would be the failure. Finally, I did win the match and it was good because I told myself, you know what? You're not a failure. You're able to do this no matter what anybody told you, told me. Now, I'm giving you this example because this is an example where I was able to overcome my fears and my failures. And I was able to get into, into the zone and forget about everything around me so I wasn't so absorbed in my past. But yes, I'm telling you this also because there, there have been matches where I've been so absorbed in the past that I would just dwell on my past mistakes that I would lose the match. I would be thinking about the end score so much that I would, and or the previous point, that I would totally lose thought of the present because I would just be so absorbed in what had already happened. And after my many years of playing tennis, I realized that it's no accident that tennis uses the daily language of life. Advantage, serve, break, love. These basic elements are used in, from tennis are used everyday existence because every match is pretty much like a miniature life. Points become games, games become matches. It reminds me of the same way seconds become minutes and minutes become hours. And any hour can be our finest or our darkest. It's our choice. We're human and we're going to make mistakes. And you know what? You have to know that that's okay. You're not going to win every single time and you're not going to be perfect. Because mistakes are inevitable. Failure is inevitable. But what determines your success is not how many mistakes you make, but how you're able to bounce back from them. Which is why I decided to talk to you about tennis. This game is filled with mistakes. You're practically making a mistake every 10 seconds. And you're making up what you're doing on the spot, very similar to life. But it's so similar to life in that the winner is the one who is able to overcome their mistakes. And the loser is the one who just can't forget them. So be the winner in life. Don't think about the end score because you're just going to end up losing the point. Thank you.